This is Neil from iPaintGirls.com and welcome back to part 4 of how to draw without having to draw. So I'm going to zoom into my button here and let's see something. Right, so okay. Let's go ahead and make a copy of it. So that's the actual button itself. This is the round part. I'm going to merge those together for now. I try to always you know, merge whatever I can together and merge that together. Okay, cool. So now I got that whole part on that whole part. And then we'll end up merging all this together once it's all done. Let's go ahead and uh, flip this uh, vertically first. Drag it down to where it'll fit right in the edge there. Make another copy of the original one. Edit free transform this time and start to turn it and then hold down the shift key so you get full degrees that way you get a perfect 90 degree turn there fit it there and then finally we'll make a copy of that one we just made and flip it horizontally and move it over here like so so as we can see it's it's pretty much the you know it's what we need so far except we're going to have to make um, little lines across and part of it little like you know as you can see the little highlight parts that's going to be hitting because they're kind of embedded into like little little slots and those little slots are going to be you know since the light's kind of coming from the down it's going to kind of hit here here hit on this one this one would, would hit back here but we don't really see it so because it's being hit you know that that piece there and it's being covered by another shadow so you can't see it Just trying to think of the best way to go about getting that um, indented look there. We want to go. Why don't we want to draw right over the actual buttons themselves as well? I'm just thinking of the back and say. I'm, like I said, I'm just thinking of the best way. I'll push pause. Okay, this is a cool way. This is kind of a technique we've done before, but we'll we'll use it again here. I'll start with this. Well, we'll start with this button here. Go ahead and hold down the control key, left click in that area for that button. And then we're going to go to, uh, let's see here, select, modify, and we'll go to border. And we'll make border 2. And then we'll use the pen tool. And like this, make white, make a new layer, just in case you mess up. And just kind of hit it once like that. Then we'll turn the opacity way down and let's go ahead and see how that works. You know, I should be working at a higher, uh, a larger, because notice it's kind of getting, you know, weird sometimes. It's because I'm not at a high enough resolution. Well, I'm at 300 resolution, but I'm not big enough. I should be working a little bit bigger. Um, but, you know, that's fine. At, at actual pixels, it looks good, so that's all that really matters, I guess. Now, for the next buttons, we'll do the exact same thing. But I want to go ahead and merge that together first with that button, with the button it belongs to. Just because I like having the least bit of layers I have, the better. I can see what everything I'm, I'm doing and all that, and I don't get all confused. And remember, the light from this one is going to be hitting a little bit on the bottom here like that, and the same with that side. Those two buttons can actually be just reverse copies of each other, now that I think about it. So we're just going to do one of those buttons and then we'll copy the next one over and flip it. So let me go ahead and get rid of that button over there altogether. Right, so this one here, same thing, hold down the control key, left click to bring it up, up the marquee, select, modify, border by two, take the paintbrush tool, make a new layer, and just hit the bottom like that. Let's go ahead and turn this way down, take the eraser tool, turn the passy down a little bit, Get a soft eraser, kind of small. Just kind of bring out, bring down some of that. Turn the opacity way down on that layer. That just looks really ugly, even on. Yeah, that just that didn't work out right. Like if I was all in high resolution, that probably wouldn't happen. But uh, that was if I was working a lot bigger. So instead, what I'm gonna have to do is use the pen tool which isn't too big of a deal just isn't you know just 
kind of pull it like that and then we'll stroke it so um, we need I think a size one or two brush so we'll do two I think two should work make sure again you're on a new layer right click on the pen path and say stroke path with the brush click OK then get rid of that delete path just kind of fade this out with the eraser on the edges just click it a few times and then we'll turn the opacity way down like so okay so that works go ahead and merge that down with the button beneath it and now we have that button there we're not going to copy that button and put it over until we bring the whole button to completion so we'll go ahead and do that Right, so I'm going to go ahead and select the whole button again like this I'm going to use the uh, you should know how to do that by now just holding down the control key left clicking in that air, in that um, in that layer make a layer right above it using white I'm going to just kind of put a gradient across like this oops wrong one like that now I'm going to turn that way down and I'm going to merge it down with the button itself and now I need to use the pen tool again. Probably be the best way to do it. Pen tool. Yep, yeah, looks like it'll be the best way. So I'm going to extend it a little bit further than how far I need it to go. Then I'm going to grab the convert tool. Just kind of round out the edges a little bit, just like we did before when we actually drew this piece. I have to grab the white arrow tool and grab and pull some of these so that they're where you need them to be. They need to be right about in the center of everything. So make sure we're on a new layer, which we're not yet. Make a new layer. Right click, stroke path. It should still be at two pixels. Delete this path. Take our eraser tool. Again, just kind of click on the edges so that they kind of fade out. Just want to click a few times and then I need this to be a little bit brighter actually I think the d-pad on the PSP they kinda of dip in a bit so maybe this is a photo and I just this is um, maybe this is dipping in and if it's dipping in then the highlight would hit that side and not this side because it's slightly dipping in that might be the case now that I'm looking at it, it looks like that's probably what's happening And uh, we, we could, I'm uh, just thinking how much detail I want to get with the buttons. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and merge that together. So now the button's starting to come along here. Just thinking. First thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to just kind of select in here with this tool. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush and uh, soft small brush, make it dark, and turn the opacity way down. I'm just going to kind of bring up a little bit in here where the shadow, it's kind of rolling over into the shadow there. Like that. And then I might um, go ahead and do this part here. these buttons are pretty complicated and I, I never actually drew buttons like this so that's why I'm just there's probably better ways to go about all this but I'm just working real time and figure it out as I go make selection and I'm gonna take the light make a new layer and kinda of bring it up this way um, it'll look like it has kind of a dent and I'm gonna take the dark color and kinda of push it down a little bit like that Let's go ahead and turn the opacity way down on this. Something like that. So that looks like it's dipping in a little bit. Cool. I'm going to save this because I've been working for quite a while and I don't want to lose what I have done so far. That'd be a bummer. 
Go ahead and merge those two together. Okay, now I pretty much have that completed button. And now I just need to do the actual triangle parts. And to do that, I'm just actually going to use, I'm going to just do a really easy way here. I'm going to use a size one brush. That looks about right. Turn the opacity all the way up. Make a new layer again, just in case I mess up. And let's see, let's start from right about here. Click once, hold down the control, uh, the shift key. Click again, hold down the shift key, click again, and click again. And that should make the shape you need. I know that's not perfect, and maybe I should just go ahead and use the photo reference to make it more perfect. So I'm just gonna click, I'm working underneath this. So you'll see it came out like that. And then I'll turn the opacity down to something like so. Go to actual pixels. And that looks pretty smooth. I'm going to go ahead and merge that down. And this one is the one I can actually just flip horizontally by making a copy of it, flip it horizontally, and then drag it over here like so. All right, so it's all starting to look good. I need to do the exact same thing, but with slightly different lighting for the next two buttons. Okay, one thing I'm going to do is these buttons I just made, these two here, I'm going to merge them together. And that way I know the other two 13s are the ones I need to work on. And I'm going to put them in order. That's the top one, that's the bottom one. And then these two buttons, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. I'm going to bring the darkness down a bit and the brightness up just a bit. I think that looks better. Let's go to Zoom Out to Actual Pixels. Cool. Right, so these next two, it's really just time consuming. Uh, it's not that hard to do the buttons. I think more it's just time consuming. Make a new layer here. And uh, we're going to have more of a top lighting for this one. And just make sure you're drawing inside of the gray part. That's where you're trying to get it perfectly inside that gray part, basically. Edit. And we'll go ahead and uh, stroke path. It should my brush should still be on two pixels, so yeah, it is. Get rid of that selection or the the path rather. Get my my air my, my brush my uh, eraser tool like so. You just turn that down just a bit like that. And I'm gonna uh, select the whole button again use a dark this time. And I'm just going to kind of pull it where it's dark and coming up over the button a little bit there because all that kind of gets faded. Oops, I'm on the wrong... Well, I'm, I'm on, I should be doing this on the actual button itself layer. My bad. Like that. And then I'm going to just um, using the paintbrush tool itself on this highlight layer I'm going to grab a kind of a grayish color and I just want to make lines and nope I'm gonna to have to make a new layer again because I'm gonna to have to erase some of this I just want a little bit of backlight is hitting here and I want that to show through like that okay that's cool and now I'm just going to take this and um, I want to merge all those together first those three layers I was working on that button. That's that top button. I'm going to make the photo visible again. And the reason why I'm going to do this is for I can put in the triangle easy. Make a new layer. Just click, 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 click while holding the shift key down. And that's it. You got a triangle. Turn the opacity down. And what I notice I might actually want to do is now get a size, well, that was a size one brush. Um, get black and just kinda hmm well let's put those two together first merge that down and then let's see make a new layer nope cause I notice in the photo you can kinda see there's some black lines and if you wanna kinda just Simulate some of that, but I'm just going to kind of put it where 
kind of how the lighting goes. I'm not going to, I can't find a smaller, small enough brush to really make it to where it's all, let's go to actual pixels here, that looks fine. Right, so this bottom one, um, let's see, it's going to have a lot of lighting and so let's go ahead and merge that down. I'm running out of time and so the bottom button, I'm really going to follow the same procedure as I did for those except that, um, let's bring this down here, I can put all those together now. Now I just have the bottom one. The same thing except I have the light coming from the top but it's all the same stuff so I don't really see a reason to waste the time and, and show you how to do it step by step since I'm just repeating the same steps over and over again here. I'm going to push pause. Alright, so we basically continue to do this with all the little pieces. Alright, so come back with the next part. Hopefully we can, we can finish some more and then I think I'll just show how to do the general buttons and, and, and stuff and then just you know call it done. Okay.